So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, based on the time zones you all are coming from. So before we start with the session, can you all please give me a quick information if you all can see my screen and hear me loud and clear as well? Great. Thank you so much for the confirmation, everyone. So as majority of you are already aware, so my name is Neera Shekhar, and I'll be a mentor for today's webinar on the topic of React component lifecycle, where we are going to discuss on how React is structured. And then we are going to proceed from the same point onward, where we are going to discuss on how we can create a component under React and how we can call that component in one of the pages that we are going to create, a simple application that we are going to work on as a part of a discussion. So before we get started, so what we can do is now React, as you know, first of all, needs a node environment here. So again, in case you don't have the access to a node environment, you can go ahead and get started on React on Node.js as well. And again, if we are, and again, before even we get started on the concept of Components. So let's understand what components are. So components are the individual building blocks. For example, when we are working on any application, we can divide the entire application into smaller components. For example, as we can see here in the diagram, we can have a website. A website can be broken down into smaller components. For example, component one, two, three, four, and five. So the main advantage of keep of building the website in terms of these small individual components is. If something goes wrong in one component, then that is not going to impact the other components, right? The functionality of one component is not going to impact the others. And that's how we can ensure that we are going to have a better structure and better maintenance achieved for any specific code, any specific application here. And that is what we can achieve by using something called as components. So now, Let's jump directly in how exactly we can go ahead and get started on creating a component here. So for creating a component, first of all, we do need to have a node app, or we can say a React application created. And for creating the React application, we need to have a node environment. We need to have the access to a node environment there. So for that, we have to go ahead and set up the app. Now we have to download Node.js. So here we can go ahead and search for download Node.js environment. So in case you don't have the access, you can go ahead and download from here. And once you download this, you can simply open up your command prompt or terminal in Mac or Linux. And then just to cross check that node has been properly installed or not, we can simply type in node and double hyphen version. If node has been properly installed, then we would be able to see the node version return. As you can see here, we have node version returned to us. Now, to get started, so we also need to install npm create react app in case you are working on react for the first time. We have to simply go ahead and search for create react app. So create react app is a complete package available under npm as a node package manager library through which we can go ahead and create the components directly. We can do that. So now since we already have installed create react app here, so here we are going to simply use create react app. React app, and then by using this, we are going to create our apps by the name of new app itself. So this new app is going to be based on Angular itself. This, this new app is going to be based on the concept of Angular itself. That's how it is going to be structured. So let's wait for this application to be created so that we can go ahead and see how exactly we can work with this. So when we are going to work with components and we have to go ahead and define what kind of components we want to work with. And then we have to simply, we have to manually install and define the components. And basically there are two ways of creating a component here. We can create a component by a class or we can create a component by a function. So we have class components and then we have the other method as function component. So first of all, we are going to look at class and then we are going to look at function component, how we can make use of both. Let's wait for the application to be deployed. All right, so as you can see here, it is done. So now once the application has been deployed here, so now we can switch to this application here. So we can simply, first of all, switch to the directory here as CD new app that we have created. And to start editing this app here, we can make use of any of the code repositories here, like we have Visual Code. 
Rajan, so what is the difference between normal uh, application React based? So React is simply faster, and again, we can update the content in React as quickly as possible. For example, same as Facebook. So whenever there is a new content update here, so we don't have to refresh the page here. What we do is we simply go ahead and let the content get refreshed automatically. And again, whenever there is new content, we can simply ask our users to either update the view or not. We can simply define that, correct? Same thing we can do with React. Let's open up this new app source. Okay, just to avoid confusion for you all, let's do one thing. Let's open the entire folder itself so that you don't get confused on what where exactly is the public file here. So here we can click on open folder. New app. Let's suppose we open a complete main folder itself instead of just opening the source. Now, as we discussed here, there are multiple ways of creating a component. There are different ways of creating the component. For example, we want to create a simple class based component. So, what we can do is we can simply navigate to the main index file here. Now, currently, if we open the application in the browser, suppose here we have npm star. So, this is going to be now, this is basically going to display the main root component, or we can say the main application file. So let's wait for that. So basically, the React application gets opened up on localhost on port 3000. So it takes a while here, but again, once this is going to be loaded, so this is going to have the content rendered for localhost. And again, whatever content has been rendered. So as you can see, currently the deployment server is still up and running. So as you can see, this is the default VR application. So now to start creating a component, we can navigate to index.js. So now the main application is, is available under app.js. So what we can do is just to see, just to show you how exactly we can create a small base component. We can remove all of these pointers here from the main index file. We don't also need the report vitals for now. And we also don't need to import the application for now. We only need the React and React Dom on the main index file. So to create a component, we can define a simple class-based component as class, and then we can define any name of the class here. It can be app, it can be app one, two, three, it can be any name that you want to give as for the requirement. So here we can define the name here as app, or it can be any name that you want. Suppose this is just to avoid confusion for you all, we can name it as app. And here we can extend this to component. So basically, there are two ways of creating a component in a React. We can either use react.component, we can use this method as well, or in case we all already have imported component from the React library, then we can simply define a comma here, and then we can import component from here itself. We can define import component. We can choose any of these methods. And here we can use a simple constructor. So we are defining constructor to take the props as input parameter here and then by using the constructor then we can define a, super, a simple super keyword and then we can if i suppose this dot state and suppose here we want to display a simple subject now basically if you want to keep it simple then we can keep it simple as well for example here we want to render simple content let's suppose here we don't want to remove this so here we can render simple component as well in case you are you don't want to get confused and here we can define return as suppose h1. Suppose here we define suppose as welcome to editor. We can define the content and then we can go ahead and to display the content in the browser, we have to make use of react DOM dot render. And then we can define the content there. So here we have app. So under app, we can then define this one should be rendered on which particular element here so here we have get element by id and the id that we define by default is root by default as root so basically this is a root element that means now uh, this root element has been defined under the index file here as index or html so here as you can see here we have a division id defined as root where we are currently rendering all the components here all right so here we can define root. So this is what we had defined under index.js file as for the structure defined. So if we go ahead and save it up, now if we go back to the main node file, so we can go ahead and refresh it up, and then we would be able to see the content being rendered as Edurica itself, because again, that is what is going to be rendered here. All right, so that's how we can go ahead and work with the app component and 
whatever we define that can be easily displayed as a final output to the end users and that's how it simply works and we want to add let's say suppose here we want to add a different structure altogether so we can simply go ahead and define what we want to take as an input parameter if you want to use constructor if you want to use super element then we can also define that as well for example let's say we want to make use of constructor keywords so what we can do is we can go ahead and remove this component now here we can make use of constructor as an element and using constructor we can go ahead and define super keyword and then under super we can define this dot state and by using this state we can define the subject and suppose here we want to find subject as suppose react class component we can define react class component and then we can simply render the message here and by using render we can define what exactly we want to return we want to return simple h2 element as in suppose welcome to and then we want to include the subject state that we defined here so here we can define this dot subject dot state sorry this dot state dot subject not the other way around we have state dot subject subject and then this is going to be simply when it, and again when we are going to render the element so we have we have defined we want to render app because again whatever the name of class we give for example if we give this one as app one two three then this one is also going to be defined as app one two three only all right so here we have to make sure we do save it and this is going to simply fetch the entire detail here directly from that class that we defined and that's how it is going to be rendered one by one so that's how we can work with the components defined here and we, there are different ways of working with the components as well for example just like we have class based component we can also work with function based component as well so for example let's say we want to create a function based component we want to create a function based component or we want to make use of different components altogether so let's say we do one thing we try to integrate two different components into one let's say we try to integrate two different components into one so first of all for creating a component what we can do is we can go back to a command line terminal let's go right back now currently we are in the same folder as for the application here now we want to create a new component so oh, there are two different ways we can either use the same folder by using cli or we can go ahead and create a component folder in the id as well so for example suppose in the source folder let's create a new folder by the name of components components and within this folder we create a new file let's say we name a component as content.js so here we define a new component folder and under that we have a new file as content.js so here we can define we import react and we also want to import the component folder as well the component and then we want to import from react library from react library of itself and then here we can define a simple class based component here as constant for content and then here we can go ahead and make use of the angular expression where we can define return statement and in here we can define a simple s3 element as uh, suppose let's see here we have a new component a new content component a simple message for the additional component that we have created and then towards the end we can define export default content so let's save it up and now to make use of this content in our main index file we can navigate back to index.js and in here we have to first of all import the content as well so let's erase this up so first of all what we can do is we can import the content here as well let's define two things here let's say here we define import and in here we have to import the content component that we have created so here we have named it as content so here we can define the location of that so here the content is available under components folder and here we just named as content now we don't have to add the like dot js or dot ds towards the end it is self-explanatory and then we can define a simple component as constant app by using the arrow function component and here we can define we want to return now here we can define what is that we want to return we want to return a simple division and in this division we want to return suppose h1 
And suppose here we can define V R learning. Suppose I say React. So this is our H1 content for, for the current page. And then we also want to display the content available here in the second part as well. So here we can define content, then division. And then we can simply save this page. We can save the content page. So to ensure that both the contents are going to be saved. And then we have to make sure that we do restart the fact the application because until as we restart, we will not be able to see this applied in the browser. So we have to open this up. So as you can see here, here we have the main content, and this is the content being imported from the other content here. So I mean, suppose if we go back to component here, suppose if we change the content here, suppose second content, or suppose second content, second component, whatever you want to name it as, you can save it. And same thing is going to be import. As you can say apply it because now we are going to we are currently we are showing one component that um, inside the other main page here that we have defined. And whatever we make changes in this component, the same thing is going to be applicable here. That's how it works. So I guess since it is almost time now, so let's say we wrap it up for the day, everyone, and keep on practicing on what we have discussed all so far. Thank you so much for joining everyone and have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.